Are you yammy crazy? Are you yammy crazy? Lake? Lake, are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? All right, let's go. All right, come on, Lake. Come on, Lake. Over here. Jump up there. Okay, get up there. All that work. All that work and we finally get Lake up in the boat. Well, today, oh, well, he's out of the boat. Well, today is, um, we're gonna take and try to throw, we're gonna try several different things. I'm gonna try to throw a spinner bait. See if I can't do a spinner bait a swim jig maybe swim a trick worm we're gonna see if we can get on that technique for them three techniques uh yammy's in the boat and ready we just ain't got lake in the boat so as soon as he gets in the boat we're gonna get out there and give it a try so today is fishing with lake at la plata city lake Ready to catch some fish, guys? Huh? We're gonna catch some fish today. It's gonna be a fun day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, duck blinds are a good place to, to catch bass. Uh, the bass that get up there and they use it for cover so they can ambush on prey. There's a lot of lily pad stems in the water. So we're just gonna fish through here, like I said, you know, we're gonna try several different things, spinner bait and stuff like that, and see if we can't catch a catch a bass and get Lake all excited. This cove that we're fishing, this little cut, this little cove, it's famous for um, an episode I did a couple years ago, a uh, couple seasons, called Nadine. So Maybe we can find Nadine again and her sister too. You know, we'll just have to see. What do you think, Lake, while you're chewing on my boat? Isn't that something you give a, you give puppy chew toys and everything else and they won't use them. They chew on anything they want. <laughs> your shoes, your socks. I don't think I got a single sock in the house now that don't have a hole in it. That's old Lake. He's a chewing fool right now. Common fact on most people when they jig fish is um, what they do when they jig fish is they'll cast it out or they'll flip it out, pitch it out and they'll fish just certain little area. They'll sit here and they'll just, they'll fish it just for a little bit. And then a lot of time, you know, the normal, the normal angler, they'll take and they'll just start reeling it in and they want to start again. You know, they want to take and get out there and make another cast. So they'll reel it in real fast and then they'll cast it out to the next cover. Well, what you need to remember when you're fishing that jig is after you finish your initial target, finish fishing it, well then take and start swimming that jig back in. Pump it with your rod and crank it in and swim it in 
where they kind of pump and they'll dive and and swim and you'll be surprised you'll be surprised how many bites you actually get doing that because sometimes they'd rather have your jig swimming vertical than a horizontal drop or they get that wrong I don't know I'm gonna have to go back to school <laughs> I have to get a hold of the grandkids and have them, have them explain to me and say hey you're doing it wrong you're doing it wrong so far the weather's nice went fishing yesterday and had a lake in the boat and he was shivering so bad. He was shivering so bad yesterday when we was fishing that I had to take I had to take my jacket off. I had to take my jacket off to wrap him up in it so he'd stay warm. He was just sitting there just oh, oh, you know, all cold and stuff, you know, so yeah. You gotta take care of your buddy. You know, he's my fishing buddy. Yammy got mad because Yammy's just sitting there giving me a look going, where's my blanket? Yeah, he didn't have no blanket. I told him he's a frozen pizza pan. <laughs> he's, he's like, yeah, uh-huh. All right, made a change here. Got a backlash, no fear. Yeah, just pick it out. Pick it out and good to go. I got that trick worm on. Now I'm just can't basically all I'm doing is casting it out and just cranking it back. I'm just I'm just reeling it back. This is something anybody can do. Anybody. If if you're not like you say, well, I'm not very good bass fishing, but you know, I like to go to ponds and bass fish. You know, get you a trick worm and cast it out there on a like a something with a little bit of weight, Texas rigged, and just start reeling it in. That's all you gotta do. Right now, our main concern is just trying to find something that's going to bite. We haven't had any bites yet. We might have to end up going through the dam and maybe jerk bait or crank bait here before it's over. Because I know Lake, he don't like it when I don't catch anything. He's like, catch something. I'm going to sleep. Wish he's went to sleep. <laughs> We'll just get out here. See what's going on. Can't ask for a prettier day. Kind of cold, but pretty day. taking the trick worm you know and just swimming it now we got some cover right here that I'm getting ready to come up on and fish so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna cast through the cover pitch it to the cover and fish it just like I would like a, a regular worm like regular worm fish or just like regular jig fish Kind of pop it off the bottom, pop it, kind of swim it back in. You gotta be careful, cause I mean, you'll swim. Or you'll get hung up just like that. And we'll change. We'll have to 
go down here and go get it. What I was going to say is you have to be careful. A lot of times you'll get short struck. You'll get a short strike. Like on a crankbait. On a crankbait, a lot of times they'll hit you right at the boat. With this technique with the trick worm, they'll hit you right at the boat too. So you gotta you gotta watch out how to do that. Just be expecting it because it'll give you a heart attack in a hurry. Cause they'll come right up and they're like Phew. Getting back to the story. We'll get back to the story here about Lake. Um, Lake was a, basically he's a rescued dog, okay? I found him. I found him at the lake. And uh, when I went fishing, okay, there's fish. Oh, that woke like up, didn't it? Ugh. All right. What do you think, Lake? Huh? What do you think, bud? Is that big enough one for you? You don't look too excited, do you? Huh? What do you think? He's like, nah, nope, they don't excite me. All right, well, we're gonna put this one back in the water. There we go. Swims away. All right. That's what you do. Got to swim in that trick worm and caught her caught her first fish so that's cool um, getting back to the story lake was um he was um abandoned you know abandoned dog little puppy so it's nothing against you know anybody that you know, anything to happen. There ain't nothing against that. We were just the lucky ones that found him. You know, sometimes things happen. You know, it, it's what it is. But I found him there, and we just been best buds ever since. But he was, he was a, I guess a stray, whatever you want to call him. And... I took him home to be a part of my family. So if you all, if you all get a chance and if like you have a capability of helping out somebody that have like a puppy or something that's like, well, I don't know what we're gonna do with our pup, you know, and all this and, you know, help them out, take their pup, you know, give them a, give them a good home. That's what it's all about. I don't know how long he was there that day I found him. He was crying, crying and screaming. and He's not crying and screaming no more. He's a, he's a hyperactive little yammy crazy dog. But he was, when I found Lake, he was five weeks old. I went up to the shore and I picked him up and that's the story of his life right there. His story, his story's just starting. But obviously he's sitting there saying that we gotta catch bigger fish cause he wasn't too excited from that one. Yeah, if y'all wanna follow the 
if y'all want to follow the story about Lake, on my regular Facebook page, um, Sam Sagasser, I uh, I have a little photo album that's dedicated just to Lake. It's called um, Puppy Power, and I tell his story. There's a bite. Yeah, you... There we go. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if y'all seen that come. <laughs> oh. I wonder if y'all seen that come flying across the screen. <laughs> that thing, that fish rocketed all the way to the other side of the boat. <laughs> and I almost think it was right in front of the screen where it went. Woo! <laughs> oh, that was fun. A little B one. Heck, that. <laughs> that worm ain't much bigger than him. Oh wow, that was fun. There we go. <laughs> the the photo album's called um, Puppy Power. But you can also go to my Facebook page for the show, which is Yammy. Y A M I. Look for the orange pizza pan. And um we're a pizza pan with an attitude there and we talk about lake and all the fun we're having all of us are having and come by and give it a like and check us all out you know i'm kind of glad the kind of glad the weatherman kind of getting closer to getting something right on the weather you know the way i tell you what i tell you what let, let's talk here for a second you know, that weatherman, he gets a bad rep, man. He gets a bad rep. Because he, um, every, whenever something ruins somebody's plans, whether it's fishing, a picnic, a graduation, birthday party outdoors, or something like that, you know, the weather, who's the first person gets blamed? The weatherman. Well, here lately, the weatherman's been pretty dang accurate on his forecast. You know, he's been calling for a case of dark, for a chance of darkness about 8.15 p.m. every night. So, I mean, he's pretty close to being accurate on that. I haven't seen him be wrong yet on that. So, hey, to the weatherman, hey, all right, you're on it. Ah, uh, you know, we got to poke fun at somebody. But I tell you what, he called it right today. Beautiful day. Totally messed up. Cast it in the tree and bounced out of the tree. And... There we go. Lake, wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all want to see how trained this dog is? I'm telling you, I got this puppy so trained right now. He won't even move. I'm gonna, I'm gonna holler at him, and he won't even come up here. Lake. Go to sleep. Bingo. He's asleep. <laughs> He's not too excited at the moment. You know. I mean, he he fished for eight hours yesterday, so he's still kind of tired. So. It gives me someone to talk to when I'm out there fishing. You know, he he encourages, encur gives me encouragement. You know, I'll be out there struggling, trying to catch fish, and and he'll just like come up there to the front deck, and he'll say, "Hey, yo, homeboy, catch fish." I gotta, I gotta give a um. <laughs> boy, he's really zonked out right now. Uh, I gotta give a shout out. Um, this shout out's gonna go to uh, one of my best friends, um, James Rogers. He's a fellow teammate on Denali Rods, Lose Reels, and Skirmer Spates. And um, he got big bass in the BFL Ozark Division, fishing as a boater for the first time. So, James, congratulations. Way to go, man. You know, love you. One of my best friends. He had a 513, I think, or something like that on Grand Lake. Cashed him a big old check for um, big bass. So, way to go. I'm gonna to change to a different worm here. Okay, what I'm using is a is a Biffle 
this is like a biffle hardhead okay and then i got like i don't know maybe seven oh seven inch worm or eight something like that probably close it ain't no 10 inch it's probably that seven inch or something this is like a plum or something 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 and um what i'll do and um this technique works for everything so we're going to show you like maybe fish a lizard fish a trick worm this is a ribbon tail worm is what this is so what i'll do is i'll start going in the head of the worm and after i get in the head of the worm i'll take and i'll go down to oh about the second about the second rib on the worm and then what i'm going to do is come out i'm going to come out like that and then i'm going to spin around so that it's it's on that worm kind of shank keeper and then you can see the biffle head kind of spin then i'm going to bring bend the worm pull the hook back through and then i'm going to skin it you know skin hook it and then it's level now this tail is attached so then i'm going to untatch the tail and there you go that's the finished product i'm going to get out there and we're going to fish it see if they want something with the tail moving we're going to try that different color too so let's give it a chance all right well there's a bite missed him <laughs> First cast using that different worm. What I'm doing, where I got that bite on the first cast using a different worm, a little drop right at the edge here of this bank. And just a shallow, just a little shallow drop is all it was. So I put that different worm on and we're just Swimming it along with that biffle hardhead. Just remember when you, when you're doing this type of fishing, you can fish it like a regular worm, where you'll cast it out there. And you can like just fish it slowly, lifting it up and down. There's a the fish. There he is. Oh yeah. Sorry fish, sorry fish. All right, then a nice little healthy fish. Lake, is this one gonna get your approval? No, boy, I tell you what, there's no impressing this dog. All right, well, let's get a release back in the water. What was that second cast after using that? There you go. We need to get a hold of a big one though, and that way old Lake and he can get wound up and excited. I he, I tell you what, man, he's hard to impress. Make your cast, kind of let it sit toward the bottom, and kind of hop it. That's what I was doing on that other one. I'd reel up the slack, hop it. Then I kind of, I get tired of hopping it, so I just like, just reel it. Just reel it slow. I tell you, plum, plum's one of my favorite colors on worms. 
I, I like that color. I'd even like to have that in a crawl. It's just an all around good color. Works in different water clarities. Works real well. Fishing a beaver pile here. And uh, see if we can't get any bites on it. The secret to fishing the beaver pile is pretty simple. Don't get hung up on it. Okay? What I mean is don't snag up. Don't get your hook stuck in the wood because if you have to go go in there to get it, you're just you're just going to end up messing up your fishing. So you're just better off you're better off trying to do your best to stay off the pile and um, I mean just barely tick into it and stuff because there's fish there and these are good for crappie fishing, bass fishing but once you go in to get that lure back you're just going to mess up the whole thing and just have to wait until it calms down in order to get back in there to catch another fish. And when they're when the when the when the bass are there, they're there. I mean, it's loaded. Crappies there, it's lo it'll be loaded. And the wood, the wood and everything comes out a long way. Got to feel it out. Ah, uh -huh. oh, that. <laughs> He's in a fight right there. It's almost like the bite was right at the edge of the edge of the pile. Way out the edge. Let's bring it back through and maybe maybe they hit it again. Alright, Lake, what are you doing? You're up and about. You woke up, puppy. Oh, back to sleep. Find something to chew on. No. No. No, 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 do that here. Ugh. No. No, no, no. Name I think they said there was like a slight chance of rain today. But there's fish. Oh yeah! Hey, that's a dancer there. What about this one, Lake? Does this get your approval? Hmm? Does this get your approval? Yeah! Oh, yeah! 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 Lake says, Dad, you're finally done it! Yeah! All right! Okay, that's enough. Got your approval. Give a little kiss. Okay, there's the kiss. Oh! Give it the approval. Huh? You finally liked it, huh? You gonna get up here and fish now? Huh? You gonna get up here now?
got your nap in, you decide it's time to fish, huh? Yeah, you get these, you get these good stretches of dams. They'll hold you some good fish. Pop you a jig off. Are you agreeing with what I'm saying? Yes? No? This little area is good. Yeah. It can hold a lot of fish right here in this little cut up to the dock, up to the boat ramp. You'd be surprised. You can probably catch some of your biggest fish right here. I've caught it. My one of my biggest on this lake is a six nine I caught right here on this brush top. Caught it like in March third, real early in the year. Caught that fish on a jig. Lake, see if we can't get no what I done I took off the worm now I'm showing you another option that you can use on a biffle hardhead this is uh it's made by yum or uh, yum but it's a brush hog impersonation so this has got a lot of swimming tentacles on it also and it'll work just as good presentation is anything else. There goes a snake swimming away. I don't like snakes. Everybody's watched show enough they know I don't like snakes. <laughs> so let's see what we can catch on this. Another, another way the Biffle Hardhead works. You want to give that one a kiss? No, just kiss. There you go. What was that? The first cast or second? First. You've all had a chance to meet Lake, you know, the who the show's about today. You know, about we went out and fishing and he was there, little puppy stranded, so he become part of the fish on family. Well, I want to um, proudly introduce, we're gonna proudly introduce a, a new member to the fish on media team and uh, his name's Patrick Harrison Patrick say hi to everybody hello we're giving Patrick said he wanted to get on board with the team and help us out so he's um Patrick's gammy crazy like the rest of us so we're out here fishing he's now do you do any cat fishing Patrick I have okay so you're kind of like you're kind of like Chris the cameraman, you know. Chris the cameraman, he's a catfish guy. So whenever it comes to catfishing, we got to go to the camera guy to find out about catfishing. And he, um, Chris, Chris is busy. He's, he's got a he's got a full time job at the moment, and uh, so we use him whenever we can. And 
whenever he can't go, then we use Patrick. So we're glad to have Patrick on part of the team. How many casts do you? There's fish. That's a good one. That's better than what we've been catching. I didn't do a good job netting that one. That was still a lot of fun. Okay, what now? I was just wondering when I interrupted you, oh, how fun? often you have to spray your spray? Oh, you know, that's a good question. You know, that, I'll tell you what, Patrick, that's a, that's a good question. You know, we put on, you know, I put on some spray dye and um, you wanna know how I judge that? Okay, this is how I judge it. Yep, still smells. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can still smell it too. That's why I'm You can still smell it uh -huh. back there. I didn't know what I was smelling it at first. I was like, what's going on? Yeah. But... There's fish. What is that? And when it, and when it hit, did it, was it, were you just reeling it in or? On that one? Uh-huh. Uh, I was hopping that one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was hopping that one. Actually, what I did is I made a cast like I did that one. And kind of, it's called dead sticking. Just leaving it sit there in the water. Yeah. Not moving it, and then you finally start to move it. And then as I started to move it, it picked, you know, picked it up. Or no. Okay, now, did he come off? I can't tell. Is he I can't off tell. or on? Did you see that? I did. Hey, come off. <laughs> huh. Got you. Well, we gotta rig up another one. Being that one tore us off on that brush hog imitation, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna throw something about the same, except it's gonna be it's gonna be green pump. It's gonna be a um, kind of like a chigger crawl, crazy leg chigger, crazy leg chigger crawl imitation. This one's made by Megabyte Lures, but um, I don't think he don't make this no more. So you now I'm kind of sad. <laughs> but um, what I'm using today is some of the equipment. Some of the equipment today I'm using. This is a 6.8 Denali J2 um, heavy action rod. I'm using a lose 6 to 4 to 1 gear ratio. We're using an RS net to net our fish. And this here is a Biffle. It's a Biffle hardhead 
imitation, basically. It's the same principle as a Biffle hardhead, but this is kind of, I think they call it a U-tail head that um, you can purchase at Walmart. So that's the equipment for today that we're using. And we're going through an assortment of plastics. I mean, all kinds of different plastics. Like I said, you can use lizards. I just don't have a lizard out. We had that brush hog imitation that um, come off in the water. This plum worm, you know, about nine inch worm or so. And then the trick worm. Trick worms made by Zoom. This, this is a power worm made by Berkeley. The crawl, crazy critter leg crawl that I'm, I'm using. The one I have on is made by Megabyte Lures, but I think he, um, I think he quit making it. So you'd have to go get you a Berkeley Crazy Legs Chigger Crawl, and that's um, well, the plastics we've threw so far on that um, fishing the biffle head technique. We're gonna go to another spot and see what we can catch. Now is this Nadine country? No, no, Nadine's on down around the corner. Okay. This is, um, this bank is actually, it's, it's kind of a shallow bank, shallow flat bank, and it's got a lot of wood cover on it. So, if they were starting to hit wood, you know, lock down on wood like they were over there, then they're liable to be on this, you know, side. And see, that's one of the benefits that's one of the benefits of like knowing body of water. You know, it's like, well, if they're doing that over there, this side of the lake on this stretch is about the same depth, same type of lay down cover as the other side. So then you come back around and you go to duplicate that. Yeah, see this, all this area is normally lily pads all through here. It'll be this summer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if the crappie was biting any better on this lake, this thing would be packed. But I don't know if the crappie's biting very good. Hmm. That kind of what it's known for. No, no, it, it, it's known for some bass. Known for big bass, but there's some good crappie in here. I mean, a lot of people crappie fish. Well, Chris, the cameraman, he, um, he comes down and he sits on the dock and he catches channel cat right off the dock. Yeah. You know, casting out toward the middle. A lot of times too that's a shade line you can see that shade line mm -hmm. and you'll be surprised of how many fish you'll catch how many fish you'll catch right there on the edge of that shade line that shade line is actually structure it's actually cover in the sense of you see that tree laying in the water mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing right so I mean it, it's just simply the same thing it's the same type of structure shade works the same way so a lot of times you know we get in the summer and the heat you know yeah you might that. have to focus on the shade mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been places where there'd be a shade line way out here in the middle of the lake, you know, in the middle of the flat or something, mm -hmm. and it'd be stretched way out here deep. You couldn't catch nothing 
up on the bank or toward the bank, you caught everything on the edge of that shade line. All right, hey. We went out here fishing today with Lake. And um, do everybody a favor. If you get a chance to find a stranded, if a, you find a stranded dog just by accident, go ahead and give him a home. You know, take care of it. I did that with Lake, and um, we're fishing together now. We're best buds. What you want to do for the puppy, you know, he laid around and slept a lot, but he's really used to the boat and has a good time. So what you want to do with the puppy is you want to make him a go bag. We got fresh water. Got a bowl for fresh water. Got some doggy treats, some dog bones, milk bones. We got some dog food. And we also got a leash. So for me, for Lake and Yammy, and the new member of the Fish On crew, Patrick Harrison. Patrick Harrison. Um, we like to say thank you and tune in again next time for another episode of Fish On. And Lake and Yammy will be here. And you might even hear Patrick behind the camera. Alrighty. Have a good day. Fish On.